create a wetland, you have to be able to identify that you might have the opportunity or the potential to have a wetland on your property. But as far as difficulty, there really isn't, it's not that hard. We've got great sources in the state of Michigan, including a private organization like Ducks Unlimited, uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service through their partners in uh, wildlife, and the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. And just those three, there's someone in the neighborhood that can help you out as far as determining whether this could be a viable wetland or if the wetlands opportunities and what you might have to do, whether it's a, a drain plug or a, a tile break or that sort of thing. And maybe you've got some natural wetlands on your property and all they need to be is a preserve. That's the most efficient, effective wetland you can have is one that's already there that you don't have to do anything with. If somebody's interested in doing a wetland restoration and, and they want to contact DU, uh, they should We'll, we'll generally ask for a, a series of information from them, and it's pretty standard. And what we'll generally do is we'll try to find out where their property is, um, if it's a, if it's an important area for waterfowl, what kind of wetland they're talking about restoring. Um, if they're talking about an enhancement or a restoration, those are different things. Sometimes people have a wetland already, but it, they want it looking a different way. They want more water, less water, that sort of thing. So it all depends on, on what it is that they're trying to get out of the out of the wetland restoration. And usually, what we'll do is. Uh, we, we generally don't have a private lands program ourselves. What we'll do is try to get them in contact with an agency or an organization that does. In our case, we work a lot with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Partners for Fish and Wildlife Program. We have that expression, we're from the government and we're here to help. And indeed, we are here to help with a variety of conservation programs to work with landowners to restore wetland habitat on their own properties. We can't do everything for everyone everywhere. But we do have programs that if our goals match your goals, we'd really like to work with you and restore wetland habitat on your own grounds for the benefit of wildlife, water quality, and other values. We're looking to restore wetlands for the betterment of uh, migratory birds and waterfowl. Uh, just to restore wetlands, we've had a great loss in the state. Um, in this county, I think it's been over 50% of our wetlands are um, have been destroyed, draining, mainly due to agriculture. Um, so that's kind of the Fish and Wildlife Service goal, but the landowners want to improve it for all types of wildlife uh, and for aesthetic value. The drain commissioner is interested in this because we're going to help, hopefully help his uh, drainage problem here and create a little more water storage. As Montcalm County Drain Commissioner, I see it as a benefit and a part of the overall watershed management of the waters in our county and state. A lot of people think wetlands are wet all the time, year round. They think of a marsh or a swamp. But a wetland can also be an area that dries up for a good part of the year. It can be an area that never has water on the surface. When we look at a wetland, we're looking at three characteristics. Generally, we have the water, we have the soil that's been infected by the water, and then we have plants that have also been affected by the water. We're looking at plants that grow with their feet wet. Essentially plants that can grow where they have water in the soil, they're adapted to growing in those wet conditions. What we have around this part of Michigan is pothole wetlands. Small one to three acre little little basins. Kettle wetlands, if you will. And just like you see beyond there, it looks like a little bowl, a, a little puddle. But basically what's in that bowl is there's a tile there's, a, there's an agricultural child that runs down that whole field. So basically there's a series of pothole wetlands all along here. It wouldn't be one big wetland. There's probably one, there's, there's th at least three basins within this field. And that's what it looked like on, on the side you've seen over there. We had basically a series of two basins uh, and, and we, had, uh, we knew there was a tile going down through it. Uh, and then you can break them and, and restore the wetland. Every situation is different. Uh, some of them, you, if there's uh, good enough drainage, you can get it dried out. This year has been a, a little difficult with all the rain we've had, but uh, if you can get it drained out, a lot of them can be done just with a dozer. Uh, we still need either a backhoe or excavator there to, for a tile search to, because a lot of these places, even though it hasn't been, they might be wet for a long time and, and People th don't think there's any tile in there. There's, there's an old clay tile, and if you don't get that dug out completely, once that fills up and gets the, the water pressure on it, it'll clean that tile out and 
then you're back to square one again. Okay, this is your older tile. This is done 50s, 60s. This is your clay tile. Um, different sizes. This is just four inch. Uh, you get some made out of cement. Some will be different colors, but you'll have a lot of those. Uh, and we find a lot of these. These are put in a long time, uh, and they actually lay end to end throughout. This is your newer tile. This is plastic, perforated. Um, it'll be black, yellow, white. Uh, and these are laid typically in the low areas or every, depending on the soil type, 30, 40 feet apart. Uh, but these are just the plastic versions of what you see there. Well, when we purchased this land, it was excellent farmland. All of it. Um, it was all tiled, but the piece you're on now was originally a wetland back in the 30s, probably. When the, Native grasses were uh, turned under, and at that time, it's been farmed ever since. When we purchased the ground, we wanted multiple use. Um, we searched using federal programs and everything else, and finally decided and met with uh, MDOT, and they needed something for uh, mitigation. And so we built one of their largest projects ever, which is a 125-acre marsh, which includes wetland hardwoods and everything.